Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. It's back to something I ought to have covered on a more frequent basis. Not only this is the most incredible, most sophisticated chess ever. This season's top chess engine championship rocks in every single way. But it's a way to improve our game is to just sit back and watch how these incredible engines do their magic. I squeezed in the game round two from the infra final between Komodo and Stoflace. It's not over yet, but given the dragon is super strong, let us see what he's capable of doing. Today's game is one from the round of, well, what round was it? Round 41 of 50 between Stoflace and Komodo. And why not? Let's look at it in some detail. I have no idea why these games are not popular, but not many care. I also appreciate these games. There is at least a platform to watch them. Expect it all today, and I will spare you absolutely nothing. Starflace has this side of the board, and what we have here is a full move book. The opening tested is a Levitsky attack. I have no idea where the Levitsky kicks in, and I guess his opening is not as rare as it looks because there is a Tromposki involved. We have d4, d5, and here's a Tromposki, which is not often played at high level tournaments. The bishop is attacked, bishop h4, knight h6, and after this move, this knight repositions here, and this is it. Has anyone seen anything like this before? There are two ways to do it here. One is knight f3, and two is bishop g3. Possibly a third option is to go for this. I don't think there is anyone on the planet who would opt for anything like this. g5 would drop the bishop, but there is always this check. The king is forced to the seventh, and in a way, strange as it looks, this bishop is saved. Coming back, this is how Stoflace plays it. Komodon introduces this threat. Stoflace opens up an escape path, and here the knight is handed over to the bishop. Komodon now introduces this queen going after this guy. And it's all about how you proceed here. There are one, two, three ways to cover, but what's the best way? One is knight e2 to his queen f3. <laughs> yes, there is another way. One is way stronger than the other two, and let's see why. If queen f3, coming with e5, introduce the knight and this threat on d5, attack the queen. And if you challenge the queen, may it be challenged c6, there is a choice from moving the queen out to swapping them or even introduce the knight to cover. Now I skip this variation because there is so much more stuff coming. If knight is so, go for the same as before, introduce the knight, develop the bishop, and what we have is a messy position with probably north having some edge. To cut a long story short, Stoflace went for the most non-human move from them all. They went the king to save this guy. It's not a blunder. E5. Stoflace introduces this thrust. And it doesn't matter how you deal with this guy on C4. You can either take, introduce C6, or even the knight. If you take and take, Komodo can introduce the knight. And even if this knight is attacked, funny as it is, this knight is safe. You can try this bishop move, and self cannot take the knight due to the pin. Only when this knight is introduced, the knight will need to evacuate. And if you follow this one through something like this, 
Maybe the best way to deal with this attack is to go long. If knight e4 attacking the queen, queen b6, the queens will probably come off. And even if this threat appears, after knight f5 takes and takes, rook c1 may fall short to this move. If you follow this one through via this attack, if we don't want to move the knights, this move will be fine. And north looks great. Coming back after this thrust to c4. The dragon does introduce the queenside knight. And we stow flays taking. This is also where the tricks don't. Where are they? They're here, right in front of you. The dragon eliminated this guy. And should you go on to arrest this knight? Once you take here, you would nearly have lost your queen. King e2 forced, and there's the idea of letting the knight go. What happens if we get rid of this guy? There is a nifty check in the making. What does queen e1 do? Queen f4, knight f3, remove this guy, and what you need to be looking out for is bishop a6. Knight c3, and in fact, not bishop a6, but rook b8. Because of this check, you read to cover either through b3 or rook b1. If rook b1, you may want to apply this pin. This would have been one very interesting position to consider. But there are so many others. Coming back, stove flies once the knight. But first, you remove this guy. With Komodo capturing, Stoflace developed the king side knight. It's just in time to cover. Bishop d7, knight c3 attacking the queen. The majesty backs off, and this is how Stoflace plays it. Beauty with these engine games is every single move matters. If one move doesn't matter, it's either passive or it's a blunder. Would you make of this queen move to a4 and rise into the lion's den? If you go for this exposure, bishop b5 is followed by this check. The king backs off. It should north castle. It's either one or two possible options. One is to remove this guy from the rim and to subtract the bishop. Let's go through both of these two variations. Take the pawn, trade the bishop to the bishop. And if you go for this queen move, take, take, and let's explore this attack on the knight. If you take after rook d2 and knight d4, get this check going, push the king west, and if you now Get this key move in, Stoflace will be looking more than fine. A sub variation here is after rook d1 not to directly take, but to back off the knight. Come in with this check, move west, and if you chase after the knight, bring him back here, and what you're looking at here is south having far better position. How better? It's hard to say, but better is better. Coming back, if you trade the bishops, should you now go for this guy on the rim? There is a potential mating one. Make room for his majesty. Deliver this check. The king escapes to the seventh. And if you challenge the queen, if they do depart, rook a8, b3, bishop d6, and what is here? Rook d1. And now knight b4 is forced. King h2, h4. South is in trouble. If rook e1, this rook drops like a fly after this takes check. If rook f1, it can still eliminate their pawn. If the king moves here, centralize the knight. And north appears to be miles ahead even after this check. King c8 and Komodo 
is unshakable. Coming back, let us see what happened after Komodo cancelled. Stoflays came in with this very strong initiative. This move frees up the first and the rooks. Either one of them would want to hunt after the queen. King B8 lets the big lady come under fire. Komodo squeezes her here. And by this attack, this game is now steaming hot. This attack also meant some pieces were going to disappear. Knight b4 led to Stoflays to bring this kingside rook into the game. But is in time. When this check appeared, anything Stoflays has will just have to wait. The king returned to the first. This bishop was removed. And you need to sit on this and think. Do you take with a queen or with a knight? If you take with a queen, Knight c2 can lead to a situation. If the queens depart, rook e2 gets you in with this fork and something has to give. Allow this development and you are toast. If rook e4, you will get the same exact picture. In with this fork, and this position is identical to what we've just seen. So coming back, this might explain why Stoflays uses a knight to capture. But Using this approach, this is still risky. Knight c2 attacking the rook. And this is a moment where the party starts. Sometimes it's not the side that wins, but the showage game, and particularly where engines play, it's a complexity of variations that matter. There is a reason why these monsters belong to an entirely different league. What knight c2 does is obvious. But what is not obvious is how each engine reacts. There are a number of ways you can do it here. One is to pin the knight. Two is to retaliate in this way. And three is to throw something as lame as this. Let's start with this pin. Problem here is with this incoming check. Get the king to back off. Move the queen out of danger, and should you take here after takes and takes, what side is stronger and what side is not? If you take the knight, this knight also comes off. The central pawn on d5 is automatically eliminated, but once you discover this response, surely the position looks equal. If after the queen is taken, you remove this central pawn, should you go on to get rid of the knight? It's not king takes knight, but something way stronger. It's this beauty of a move. If you surrender the rook for the bishop, rook a3 seems to do, well, seems to be just in fine, but there is more than meets the eye. The magic move is rook d8, b4, rook c1, king f2, and this check will force the king to the third. This guy comes off, and should you try this, what happens if you're confronted by this check? King f5, this guy is arrested, and what a mess. There is no need to say Komodo would have a field day. Let's examine option two. And this is to retaliate. The problem with this is here, with this fork. Once the rook comes off to the knight, it again looks green for south. So far the queen is covering the dark squares on this diagonal. There will be no danger for north. At best, if you attack the queen, this check, and if king g1 launch this check, the queen is no longer needed to guard the dark squares. King h2, get rid of this guy, and south goes nowhere. Coming back, shall we look at that third option, which I call lame? What does knight d4 do? And why is it lame? And for starters, knight d4 is anything but lame. And let's see why. This is in fact how Stoflace played on. So why does the engine offer the rook? And what are the engine's motives? With this rook coming off, Stoflace uses 
the rook on d1 to support this guy on d5, then allows the knight to enforce his fork. Where would you place the queen? If here, you would relinquish control of your grip on a7, and should the queen arrest him with a check, this might now be over. King c8, coming with this check, king d7, grab hold of this guy, and this king has no viable squares to escape to. King e8, allows consider two options. One is this takes check, and two is to eliminate the knight. Knight takes check, king f7, remove the rook with a check, take the knight, check this one out. Even knight e6 works. Queen e7, and there is a trick here. Get rid of the knight, and when the queen is removed, this fork is all you need, and south wins easily. Coming back to this position, right after the queen gets rid of the knight, this move to d6 is also as deadly. If queen d7, coming with this check, with the king forced here, you can now get rid of the knight, but this time you need to use the king. Coming back to this very position, after king c8, you may want to go for a direct d6. If the knight disappears, North will lose the game. Come in with this check, and it's instantly over. If you take with the rook, this is all you need, and let's hear it. Checkmate. Take with the queen, and the ending is the same, and let's hear it again. Okay, checkmate. If after d6, you take using the pawn, you can either capture the knight, you can deliver this check, or way stronger, the very impossible move to find has to be this queen initiative. If you remove the knight, deliver this check, if the king moves to the seventh, this brand new check pushes the king to the eighth, but allow this takes on d6, because of the double check, because the king has nowhere to go, we also have a checkmate. And let's hear it once again. I think this is a checkmate. Eh? So, coming back for the nth time, Komodo kept his control of the dark squares, and especially on a7, by bringing the queen here. With the knight now coming off, Komodo delivers this check. If you go king g1, a6 will force an action here. If you take on c7, there is bishop d6. The rook and knight now go, but after the knight goes after the rook, this is what you need, and it will be lights out. If after this guy on c7 comes off, or even before that, a6, knight takes. Okay, this one does not work. It's all because of this check using the bishop. If king h2, get rid of the knight, and other than this queen move, there is something that looks more powerful. If the queens go, take the knight, and still Komodo will be leading with quite some margin. If you choose to go for these takes here, even if the queen drops, once this bishop bites the dust, because the queen escapes, this will be very easy. Or shall I say easy peasy? Maybe best after the knight comes off, queen d1 is best. Get rid of the queens, but we still have the same as before. Take the knight, and it's game over. Coming back to the game, after this check, Stoflays used the rook to block. Komodo continued with the checks, and with Stoflays moving his king west, Komodo slips in this check. King up the board, and we now Komodo charges after the knight. 
With the night taking, I want to use this check. Stove flakes are always pieces very well covered. We're looking at the night pair and this point on D5. There are some interesting variations in how you choose to play this one. To save some time, talking of daring responses, it had to be this king move to the third. From this position, the only check you have is this one here. Commodore also needs to consider the safety of his rook on d8. It finally bypasses the queen check from e5 and ultimately chooses to develop this bishop. If you take and take, queen c4 will get the queen pinned and this knight now c7 will fall. At best, there is his offer, but when this check appears, even if the ladies go, you can easily say what side is better. So coming back, Stoflace 2 is tricky in a way. The engine lined up the queen here is now looking at removing this guy from a6 with a check. Bishop d6 got the rook to come off to the knight and with the knight retaliating, Komodo pins him. Rook d2, which is very deliberate, led to h4 and this is how Stoflex responds. He attacks the queen. Where was she to go? Using the pin on the knight, the dragon slipped in this check. Stoflex moves the king west, and by this renewed check, His Majesty finds the center of the board. Now, you try and find a way to capitalize. If you apply this check, King e4 can lead to this incoming check, but bringing the queen to cover in this game automatically dies down. So after king d4, Komodo calculated a new strategy. He got the rook to take charge of this file, this open file. The queen now is automatically challenged, and when this check appeared, Stoflays moves the king east. This one is a tough one. Common is exactly what Stoflace has, with the only difference being the knight versus bishop. If there might be any advantage, could it be the very position of the king vis a vis the king on b8? The likely event of a check, because the king has f5, Commodore first puts the brakes on this move by getting this guy here. And what on earth? Do you do here with either color? Stoflace impedes the bishop's access to b4 by bringing up this inhibitor. And the reason for rook c8 is just about to be revealed now. The dragon swings the rook across the board. Stoflace now develops this kind of attack, and for some very strange and unknown reason, or well, maybe I can guess why. This is how Komodo responds. Can anyone see why Queen B6 was initiated? One way to put it is to entice the Queen to bite on this pawn. Do just this, and you are toast. Deliver this check, and what you're looking at is probably a mate. King D3 leads to this check, and should you back off, this brand new check is all you need. King b1 leads to this incoming check. And with the rook forced back to block, you're actually not blocking anything. Once the rook comes off, isn't this a checkmate? And why not? Let's hear it. Checkmate. So coming back, this is why the queen moved to b6 in the first instance. Most humans would be tempted to remove this guy from f6, but do this and you will get checkmated. But big question is, did Stoflays fall for it? No. The engine challenged the queen in this way. The queen sneaked into the rim and with Stoflays bringing in his own queen to this outpost. I know, I know this game looks like a marathon. All we looked at is a mere 40 moves, and this is why we extended our analysis. 
After the bishop g3, not only these dark squares on c7, d6, e5, and f4 are in full control, but also Komodo commands this very important outpost on e1. And this is what the dragon is looking at. Queen d3 getting out of trouble. And this is how Komodo spews his fire, just like a volcano. Rook c2 had to be a move in the wrong direction. Can anyone see why? When this check materialized, this guy was taken off. And the reason for this was not to allow the king any leeway. When this check was delivered, his majesty backed off and with Komodo eliminating this guy, it's nearly always about the position of the king on the board and actually how safe he is. With Stoufle seeing no danger in this position, he tried this move and basically offers a pawn to calm in a way the game down. With this pawn biting the dust, Stoufle has a new problem. This knight is not under fire. Knight g7 launching after this pawn, and guess what? Komodo lets him. This is how the dragon answers. Daring Stoufle to take. If you do, roll in with this check. With a king forced back, this brand new check will simply do. King to the first, this check, king up the board, and takes here with another check, and this is all she wrote. King e1 leads to this check, king e2, this check, and now king c3. And when this brand new check appears, King b3 finishes the game, or nearly. Coming with this check, King b4, this check, King back to b3, and choose your pick. There are multiple ways to do it from this point, and every single avenue, leading to a clear win for the dragon. Coming back, Stoflace went for a second knight repositioning, stopping the checks from g4. And ain't we fortunate to be able to pick out any game from the infra final and just view any one of them? From the 49 that have been played up to this point, Komodo wants to move the queen out of b6, but first the engine gets the bishop to safety. Is it possible to attack this pawn on the queen side? Maybe, maybe not. If Stoflays could talk, and for sure in a few years engines will be able to do this. Given it went for this response, the engine is clearly attempting to say b2, now b4. Coming in a way is to complicate an engine even for stoveflies, and let me tell you why. This move to b4 is being picked up as a blunder. We humans may not be able to see it, but an engine like Komoda will punish this move. He came in with this threat. You not only lose the knights, but do we also have a checkmate? It's the last resort. Stoffel has initiated this check. But with the king easily fleeing to the seventh, Stoffel is poor Stoffel has nothing to play. This is what he does. When the knight came off with this check, Stoffel tries to cover in this way. But it's the same old story. The checkmate was already locked in. And that was when g3 appeared. In order to confirm this, I went back to the initial source to verify. And do allow me to show you. This is it, guys. Right after this move to g3, right after the knight comes off, it's all about this new figure right after queen takes this. Minus 250. Is the confirmed checkmate, but what he's not able to tell us is when exactly or in how many moves that checkmate is accomplished. It's a mate in 11 moves, but this is only with the engine being able to find the best defense. And this is what Stoflakes did. 
G4. Stofle springs up this defense. And after Bishop D4 and King G2, Commodore repositions the Queen here and is looking to finish off by starting with Rook E2. Up to this point, there is a mate in six, but even here, Stofle is not able to find the best responses. He went for B5 and accelerated the mate by one move. In with a check, the king finds the first, another check followed, and with a king squeezed here, we do have a mate in two. One way to do this is by this check, and right after the king is bounced to f3, this is a checkmate, and let's hear it. Checkmate, amigo. The way Komodo did it was to do exactly the same using a different move order. Well, slightly different. It first came in with this check. The king was forced to the rim, but when the rook bit the dust. This is how Komodo gets stoveflays out of his misery. And let's hear it for the last time today. I think this is a checkmate. Eh? This was one heavenly game. The Top Chess Engine Championship games are way much more enjoyable to watch and learn. With many games previously being adjudicated, they now move all the way to the very checkmate so many of us can experience. One thing before we end things for today is an additional note. With the bishop move into place on d4, only at this point, Commodore brings up a mate. That 17 is implied, so half that to get the action mate. If you compare this to what Stoffel is able to calculate, the engine is completely oblivious to that mate Commodore locks in against there. Of course, a minus figure of 16.02 also implies there is no coming back. Different engines will show different evils. If we're able to understand them, only then we might be able to learn what is really going on. The game of round 47, which actually just finished, look at what happened here. And let me produce the original diagram from the actual game. What you see here is Komodo's turn to get checkmated. The dragon is looking at a mate against it in 16 moves. Stoveflays. <laughs> <laughs> and Stoveflays is evil, is a whopping 38.33. He's not seen a checkmate. And Stoveflays, he have found the right sequence of moves to end the game in 10 moves, which also implies Komodo is the engine that could not find the right moves in this very game in the right sequence. One of the shortest game was the one from round 14 with Komodo ending it, finding a mate, in a game of only 47 moves. The shortest game was a game that followed. In round 15, the game ended in 46 moves. And boy, in my attempt to confirm, we have another game, which is way shorter than any other. It was a game of round 10, which lasted only 36 moves. With one more game to go before this stage ends, it is highly unlikely we're going to see a shorter game. And with this, we have come to the end of today's material. This was nevertheless one heck of a game. I'd rather cover one of these engine games that no one else is covering rather than cover a human encounter I know many others will cover. And in, I know human encounters are way more popular than these games, but someone has to cover these. And I'm going to stick to these ones for now. Your chess puzzle are here, and you know the drill. Safety always first.